So this is part two of my interview with Mark Anthony. If you missed part one, please go ahead back and listen to it. You sort of need to hear part one in order to understand part two and everything we're talking about. It was such a fantastic interview. I absolutely loved, loved connecting with Mark. So go ahead, take a listen and enjoy part two of my interview with Mark Anthony, the afterlife frequency. There. Thanks so much, as always, for tuning in and listening to the podcast. Each episode costs more than you might think. Software tools to make graphics, write my newsletter, audio equipment and engineering, subscriptions to syndicate across Apple, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, it all adds up. In order to stay a sane mom of three school-age kids, I obviously have help producing this podcast. I have help creating it. I have help with a lot because I'm a big believer in asking for help. Um, But all of this comes out of my pocket. So if possible, I would like to continue to keep my podcast ad free, which means I would love for your help contributing. If just 10% of my listeners contributed on Patreon, I would be able to cover all of the costs of this podcast. So I totally recognize that not everybody can contribute. And what I can ask you to do if you can't is to follow me on social media to rate and review the podcast. And you can do that anywhere that you listen to your podcast. There's three little dots on Apple Podcasts where you can go to any episode and rate and review. Um, Also pass the podcast along. Your recommendations are what keeps the podcast alive and keeps the podcast going. So if you feel so compelled to contribute, it would really mean a lot to me. You can do that on Patreon. Uh, Just go to patreon.com and put in Dr. Amy Robbins. Also, please follow me on Instagram at Dr. Amy Robbins, at just Dr. Amy Robbins. Uh, Feel free to send me any emails at team at dramyrobbins.com. And just reach out. I love hearing from you. And I love hearing how the podcast is impacting your life. So here we go with today's episode. Justin makes sense of. Correct. We have five different brainwave frequencies. Gamma, beta, alpha, theta, and delta. Gamma is ultra high um, functioning. I I call that the Matt Amodio, Ken Jennings, Amy, Amy, uh, whatever, Schneider. You know, when you're on double, you know, Jeopardy moving it, like you're cranking it out. That's when you're doing calculus uh, equations. Then the normal awake state is beta, the state that we're in now. When you begin to meditate and relax, you shift into alpha. And that's also as you go into the dream state, which is theta. Delta, a lot of people poo-poo delta. Oh, nothing much is going on. Oh, a lot's going on. Your body's rebuilding itself, fighting infections, building cells. But as far as mental activity, it slows down because energy is getting diverted to other functions within Mm -hmm. the body. But it's on the alpha-theta border between the meditative and the dreamful sleep state that psychic and medium at, excuse me, psychic and mediumistic activity occurs. And so what a spirit does, they're able to spot that. And that's why spirits will make contact with people in the sleep state. That's probably the most popular form of spirit communication. You know, all throughout the Bible, there's stories of of angels, spiritual entities, or other spirits coming and communicating with people. It's been notated throughout history, literature, pop culture, um, you know, and many people say, oh my gosh, you know, my Aunt Martha came and talked to me in a dream, and I just knew it was her. Well, because it was. And you know that it's a a contact experience as opposed to a dream because it feels real. Mm -hmm. It has a beginning, a middle and an end. And you know, you know that that contact is real. Um, Now in what I do as a medium is for some reason, we're able to go to that alpha theta state voluntarily and while we're conscious. So we're bouncing between beta and alpha theta within a few seconds we, meaning those of us who study this phenomenon, do not fully understand why some people are able to do that, but there could be something slightly different about our brain and our ability to, to, to do this. I mean, look at it this way. Um, there's got to be something biologically different about, you know, 
uh, Serena and Venus Williams to make them incredible tennis players. All right. And right. It's the same thing when you're dealing with a, a mental activity like this. So this is all part um, part of uh, fascinating studies that are, are being conducted. So can you talk a little bit about this collective conscious communication? Because I thought this was fascinating. Collective consciousness communication is when we're interfacing with the afterlife frequency. All right, let, let's, let's make it easy. Okay. Think of your soul, your electromagnetic soul as a drop of water. And so when your body ceases to function, when you physically die, that drop of water, energy is neither created nor destroyed, only transferred from one form to another. It quantum leaps, if you will. It plunges into this ocean, this eternal sea of souls. It does not disintegrate or become diffuse. You maintain your individuality. It's just that now you are interconnected with this vast network of souls. So, and I give several examples of collective consciousness communication. Um, what's really fascinating, when I'm doing a group event, um, I recall one session where I kept picking up on these young men who all died by suicide. And they all looked to me to be late teens to mid-20s. There was about five or six of them. And I started describing them and I said, does this make sense to anyone in the audience? Seven hands go up. Actually, more than that, because there was like a mother with her, her um, other children and there was some parents and all this. What happened there is that collective, those spirits had a commonality between uh, among themselves. They were young men who all died by suicide. So there was a common a, there was a co common collective of them, as were the commonality of the recipients. And so when they came through, then they separated out and I was able to give messages to each family. So oftentimes in collective consciousness communication, it, it manifests in, in many different ways. It could be like that. Where a group of spirits that may have died in a similar fashion will come through to talk to a group of people here, or the people in this world may have a commonality, which in case, you know, in this case, it was all people who'd lost a son through suicide. Now, and so, what do you think is the magic that brings those embodied humans all together? Is it that the spirits have all guided them to that? Absolutely. Okay. And I explain that in great detail in the chapter on spiritual synchronicity and, and the chapter on spiritual situational awareness. Because, you know, they know, you know, they know spirit. When I say they, I'm talking about spirits know when they're going to get an opportunity to communicate. I mean, they, they communicate with us all the time. It's whether or not, you know, you recognize the signs. Right. But if they know that somebody like me is going to be doing an event and that their loved ones are in close proximity, then they're going to they're gonna maneuver them there. And then there's other forms of collective consciousness communication where they will give tremendous amounts of, of information that far exceeded the scope of anything that the, the spirit knew while in human form. Uh, for example, during a lot of my readings, a tremendous amount of medical information comes through. And I always tell people, I am not a doctor, okay? I have an understanding of anatomy and physiology, having studied it. But spirits can either be giving you information to acknowledge a medical condition that you're going through, or they could be highlighting something that you need to have checked. And I've got many, many examples of this, uh, uh, um, uh, several of which I put in the afterlife frequency. Um, for example, uh, recently, uh, the other night, I was doing a reading for this woman, and she said that she was having, um, I picked up on, you're not sleeping well. And I said that your, your collective of spirits is indicating that your electrolytes 
are completely out of balance, there is entirely too much sodium in your system, and that you've got to cut back on sugar. And she goes, well, I just went to the doctor, and that's exactly what she said uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. I go, well, your spirits are reaffirming this. And, and people say, well, how do they know this? You got to realize, electromagnetic soul, they move at the speed of light, because everything in the electromagnetic spectrum moves at the speed of light. So they can do a scan of your body and they pick up on all these electrical anomalies and, and other um, dysfunctions within your body. Plus being part of the collective consciousness, they're patched into this vast database. And so they can bring forth things and say that you need to get this checked or you know they will recommend therapies. I recall doing a reading for this one lady and the spirit came through and said, that there is some type of experimental high energy um, treatment that involves intense concentrations of light. And she said, oh my God. She said, I have this rare form of cancer and my oncologist said there's this experimental laser treatment. Now what's a laser beam? A highly concentrated form of light and she said that the idea was to laser the cells to raise the frequency of the cells. Now, I don't know about this stuff, but the collective consciousness does. So are they saying, yes, you should do that? I mean, is that a go for it? Or is that a just we're bringing it to your awareness that this is, is that just a validation of spirit that they knew that this was recommended how do you sort of differentiate what role that information is playing well an inexperienced medium will say you definitely need to do this and and i see people that that are experienced mediums jump to that conclusion you got to be very careful because the spirit is bringing this to your attention are they saying definitely do it or are they saying we're aware that this is an option or are they saying do not do this Okay, it's like, what if the spirit keeps showing me broccoli, broccoli, broccoli? If I say, well, eat broccoli, and then, you know, we find out that you're allergic to broccoli. Maybe they're bringing up broccoli because it's the issue. So that's why the issue is this type of energy medicine. So what the spirit is telling you in this instance is they're aware that this is an option and you should consult further with your physician Okay, so they can be pointing you in the right direction. Now, sometimes they'll come out and say, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. Um, I was doing a session. It was in front of about 100 people. And there was this uh, woman and uh, her teenage daughter. And it was, I think, um, the grandfather who had been the, the woman's father, the young lady's grandfather. And he said, don't go to the concert, don't go to the concert. And, and she goes, well, I'm supposed to go to this concert next week. And her mother's like, oh, I don't think you're going to go. I said, no, you cannot get in that car. Well, a year later, these people approach me and they say, do you remember that? And I said, well, yeah, I think I remember something about that. And so this girl said, well, it, it kind of freaked me out. So I decided not to go to the concert. And I called my friends and I said, look, I saw this, the, you know, I saw Mark Anthony, the, the psychic. And he said, don't go to the concert, don't go to the concert, don't get in the car. And my friends were freaked out. So they decided to drive really slow <laughs> and they're going up the interstate and they ran over some stuff in the road and got four blowouts, not one, four, all four tires blew out. And in the, the, the Florida trooper who came in, the, the tow truck guy said, man, you, you ladies are lucky that you're only going 50 miles an hour. If you've been going like 75, 80, you could have flipped. And, and so, look, I mean, four blowouts? What are the chances of that? And apparently there had been some type of wreck or whatever, something fell off this truck. I think it was a bunch of nails in the road mm -hmm. and they drove over them at night. And think about it. I mean, getting one blowout's bad enough, but four. And so when things like that happen, this is an indication that spirits are able to perceive what you and I call the future. And this, once again, the RAF technique, recognize, accept, feel, and trust. And the message is one of love, healing, resolution, or protection. So would one say that this 
family, this woman was guided to you to get this message. So she didn't, I mean, this is sort of gets into kind of quantum reality and how we can change the outcomes of various situations, right? Like had she not been guided or maybe she was guided, you gave her the message. She didn't listen. The outcome would have been very different. Yes. And so there's multiple realities that can happen that we can create with the knowledge that we have. That seems to be a distinct possibility. It also shows that energetically we're all interconnected. And I know that we hear that a lot in our field, okay, in the spiritual field. Oh, we're all interconnected. Let's all join hands and sing Kumbaya, which I wish we lived in that world. Um, clearly we do not right clearly we do not as much as i'd like to slide down a rainbow on my unicorn um the reality of the material world is is quite different but energetically we are all interconnected and here's how we know from science that everything is composed of molecules molecules are comprised of atoms atoms are made of electrons protons and neutrons and they in turn are, are made of a smaller particle, a quantum, ergo quantum physics, which is electromagnetic energy. So everything in our material world at the most basic level is electromagnetic energy. And that includes the air that we're breathing, the radio waves that this show is being transmitted on, you and me as people, Okay, I mean, it, it, the space between the earth and the sun, all of this is energy. Ergo, we are all energetically interconnected. And we see this in both share death and near death experiences. Um, people that, that have had a near death experience, like myself, have this sense that everyone and everything is interconnected. And I think it's because when we leave our body, we are an electromagnetic soul and and then we are pure energy interfacing and interconnecting with the collective consciousness and because we have that experience on the quantum level we come back with the hey we really all are all interconnected and you know think about it i mean buddha talked about this jesus talked about this we're yeah. all brothers and sisters every great belief system says how we're all interconnected and that's why i've never really seen a problem between faith and science is because faith has talked about the divine energy of god always having existed always will exist that we're a soul and a mortal living being that that will continue on after physical death and now we have developed quantum physics and the technology and we're beginning to prove this so last question before we wrap up today, because I'm fascinated by this multi dimensions and how you talk a little bit, and I'd love for you to elaborate more with us today about moving between dimensions and how that works. And why, why do you think it's so difficult for us to wrap our minds around some of these concepts of like moving through space and time in different ways. You know, you said spirit could see the future. Well, how do we see the future if the future hasn't happened yet? But is the future happening parallel? Am I even making sense in my questions? <laughs> you know what, when I was doing my research uh, and I was working on trying to explain space time, which, you know, pat on the back, I think I did. In fact, the quantum physicists who have endorsed my book said, you did a good job explaining space time. You did. It was very readable. It was very digestible. Well, I'll tell you something, Amy. I was ready to pull my hair out. I was trying to understand it. And I'm going through my research and I see this quote from Werner Heisenberg, one of the greats, a friend of Albert Einstein and Feynman and Oppenheimer and all that. And, and he's one of the founder of quantum physics. And what he said was, when you think you understand quantum physics, you really don't. And I burst out laughing and I felt so much better about myself. And, and then it was like, not long after that, I said, hey, let me try explaining it like this. So, you know, it's like, well, how do we wrap our head around all this? Well, it's because we're now getting to the point where this is being research discovered and coming into plain view if you and i could hop in a time machine and go back a hundred years 
let's say we go back to 1922. Let's try to describe a microwave oven to people in 1922. Let's try to describe a cell phone to me 20 years ago. <laughs> exactly. Um, and it took a visionary like Nikola Tesla, who said in an interview in 1926, that one day advances with telephony and television will cause the entire world to be one interconnected brain and will not only be able to to hear but to see each other on a device small enough to fit in a man's breast pocket i have the chills no kidding nikola tesla but then again he was nikola tesla and then right. and he had the gray matter that was up there with the einsteins and all that you know it's funny on, uh, he was talking about a cell phone, obviously, um, decades, decades before one could be developed. You know, what's funny is um, on that TV show, The Big Bang Theory, the character of Sheldon is based on Nikola Tesla because Nikola Tesla, they said, was overbearing. He was irritating. He was a control freak. And you know how on the show where Sheldon's knocking on the door like knock, 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 Leonard, knock, 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 Leonard. I knock, never knock. watched that show. Oh, my God. Well, your listeners will know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. Nikola Tesla would not enter a building unless he walked around it three times. And if he was staying at a hotel, he would not stay in the hotel room unless the room number was divisible by three. Why is he would that? diagnose him with OCD probably, right? Yes. Like that would be a psychiatric diagnosis. Yes. And the thing is a lot of uh, people that would be diagnosed as OCD would, you know, uh, would be like a Leonardo da Vinci, a Thomas Edison, a Michelangelo, an Albert Einstein. Yes. And and uh, they said Tesla, I mean, Tesla developed alternating current, AC. And, and when you go through the things that he developed that, that we use on a daily basis, and what it is, his mind's always going, 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 and he cannot rest until he figures things out. Um, Tesla, unfortunately, had a very sad ending. He died despite all of his incredible um, inventions. He never retained the patents on any of them, and he died insane and, and alone and broke, um, which, is, which is really sad. But he did grace the world with his genius. Um, you know, if you think about it, Vincent van, van Gogh, or Van Gogh, as my art friends say, he died penniless and died by suicide. I don't think he could have even imagined that one day one of his paintings would go for 50 to $100 million, maybe even more. So oftentimes geniuses are not appreciated in their, in their own time. time. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay, so back to this time space stuff. Okay. Can you give us a quick like quick lowdown yes it's in my book the afterlife frequency <laughs> and it took me a long time to research it and figure out how to explain it um because it would take too long we don't have enough time for me to explain it explain it here but it comes down to this is on the quantum level on that the smallest particle of electromagnetic energy and we're all energy and we're all interconnected on the subatomic level, scientists have theorized and believe that time does not exist. And so that- So meaning it's a, con it's a construct. Well, think about it. We live on a chunk of rock orbiting a star and we measure time by a 24 hour, oh, excuse me, a rotational cycle that we split into 24, you know, separate segments, 24 hours. And we think that time exists because we are physically born, we, we age and then we die. So, and I'm not crashing on humans for doing this because it's perfectly natural. It's perfectly natural for us to think that time is a linear construct that, you know, walk up to a whiteboard and you put a dot on it. OK, and then you go from from the dot all the way to the right and do an arrow. OK, time. Here's your born. You're going to grow you know, old and then you die. Whereas it's more like a circle. No beginning, no end. What is every great spiritual teacher? God always was and always will be. 
Ooh, okay. Always was, always will be. So what people who have, have interfaced with the divine energy, the quantum energy that, that we call God, understood on some level that this energy had no beginning and no end, which is what the laws of thermodynamics and physics teach us. So, you know, back in the Bronze and the Iron Age, when a lot of these religions were being, you know, invented by men, for men, to subjugate women and keep men in, in power, <clears throat> he said. Um, awesome. But, but the, well, it's true, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I'm sure I'll get some hate mail from this, and all I can say is namaste. Um, but the, <laughs> the, the truth is that people on that type of intellect, like a Buddha, a Moses, a Jesus, a Lao Tzu, a Confucius, um, they were able to have an understanding of this, but they may not have had the vernacular that we use in the 21st century. And I'm not degrading them or taking away from anything. We just now have a level of technology where we can discuss these things. And like you said, Amy, it's really hard wrapping your head around this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. And I, I keep at it. I keep trying. Your book certainly helped to do that. So with that, Mark, thank you so much for your time today. If people are interested in learning more about you or your work or your book, where I know I said it at the beginning, but I'll let you say it again. Where can they find you? Um, I invite everyone to visit my website, which is afterlifefrequency.com, just like my new book, The Afterlife Frequency. Um, I invite you to sign up for my newsletter if you're interested in scheduling a session. I do them over the phone, which moves at the speed of light, like the electromagnetic souls. Also, um, you can visit my calendar of events to see my media appearances, like when this show is going to be airing, and also my weekly show, The Psychic and the Doc, um, and that's every Thursday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central. You can also order my book. Uh, there's a link there uh, to order it through Amazon, but The Afterlife Frequency is available in print, on audio, Kindle, Google Books, Amazon Books, and at all fine bookstores. Wow worldwide. And, you know, um, I'm very honored because since it came out, Amy, I was notified by Columbia University that it's been nominated or excuse me, submitted for a Pulitzer Prize. And then I received um, a, a notification from film legend and icon Shirley MacLaine that she recommended it. And just last week, it was designated as one of the top 16 books about faith in God. And this has That's been That's amazing. This has been so humbling. This is such a great honor. And and to all all the people who who have uh, supported this, thank you so very much. I, I I there's no words to express my gratitude. Well, and it is a phenomenal book. It is an easy to read, um, just very descriptive. It beautifully ties together science, spirituality, your experiences. So I highly recommend it. It's the Afterlife Frequency, the Scientific Proof of Spiritual Contact and How That Awareness Will Change Your Life. So Mark, thank you so much for your time today. Sounds like you're probably not practicing law anymore. Um, <laughs> I put all my energy into my spiritual work. Um, and that, you know, we didn't have time to, I could um, believe yeah, me. I feel like we could have like four other podcasts. Decision. Yeah. So you'll have, if, if, if I'd be honored to come back and we can talk about uh, some more of the concepts and, and uh, what, what got me on this, this path full time. Yeah, absolutely. And we didn't even get to your, your NDE, but that is full. That is in the book. So for people who want to read about that too, you, they can do that in the book. Mark, thank you so much. Um, it was a joy to talk to you. And I know I certainly got a lot out of reading the book, out of listening to you speak today. And I know my listeners will as well. So thank you. Thank you, Amy. Appreciate it. Like what you heard today and want to hear more? Wondering what comes next and what it all means? Head over to Apple Podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, or anywhere you get your podcasts and hit subscribe. Also, if you could take a minute to rate and review my podcast, I would really appreciate it. 
Stay tuned as we continue to explore life, death, and the space between.